Hi everyone, it's Sean in my Proust Pets, and it's Sunday, so that means it's time for story time with Jupiter, our leopard gecko. Leopard geckos are really, really cool gecko species found in parts of the Middle East and India, places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, and Iran, because they like to live in desert type regions and even some grasslands. They're very slow moving gecko. They can be fast when they feel like it, but for the most part, they're pretty laid back, which means they make a good pet. They don't mind hanging out with you, and they always come in a wide variety of colors. This guy's mainly yellow with a little bit of black and white, but sometimes they can be fully black or orange, um, almost completely white. Sometimes there's uh, banding on them or lots of spots. All kinds of cool color combinations out there. And these guys are an insect eater and they're nocturnal. Nocturnal means that they're going to be hunting at nighttime. So they like to eat smaller types of insects, um, but sometimes they'll even eat scorpions which seems pretty dangerous, but they're pretty well adapted to it. A good rule of thumb with lizards like this too is they can usually eat food as big as the spaces between their eyes. That's what they like to hunt for. So he'd be hunting for stuff that's like maybe an inch long. Now probably the coolest feature about leopard geckos and lots of other lizards have this too, is something that we call autotomy. And that means that they can break a part of their body off and then it grows back. For leopard geckos, it's their tail. Now this tail is nice and fat, and that's a good thing. He stores all this fat there for when he can't find food. So being that he's in a desert, he sometimes could go weeks and might not find anything to eat, so he can live off of all the fat storage in that tail. But if a predator comes by and tries to grab him, that tail will break off and it'll actually wiggle like a worm back and forth on the ground, and the predator will go and try to eat the tail while he then scurries away, and then the tail grows back over time. Sometimes it grows back really nice like this. Sometimes it'll have bumps in it, but it doesn't really matter to him as long as it can still hold fat and kind of keep him uh, satiated when he can't find food. So since he's such a nice uh, laid back kind of gecko, I thought we would read a really cool book today I picked up called Corduroy Takes a Bow. Now it's by Viola Davis, who is a really famous actress and has been some of my favorite movies. So as soon as I saw the name on the book, I knew I had to buy it and pick it up and read it to you guys. So, here we go with Corduroy Takes a Bow. Are you ready, Jupiter? I think he's ready. And it's a brand new book, so the pages are still kind of stiff, but we'll work it out. It was just starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of the theater. Lisa held Corduroy tight as they walked up the steps. She'd never been to a big theater like this before, neither had Corduroy. They'd come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs. A brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Lisa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held Corduroy a little closer. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats are soft, said Lisa. She put Corduroy on her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a very tall man sat down in front of Lisa. Mommy, Lisa whispered to her mother, I can't see. Here, dear, said her mother. We can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to send the coats, the orchestra started to play. She forgot all about Corduroy. He slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Now I can't see anything, said Corduroy. Maybe if I got closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When Corduroy got to the top step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and tumbled into the orchestra pit. He looked around at all the musicians and thought, this is a good spot to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. You're being a good gecko. I'm going to have to set you down for a second while I turn this page. I thought I had separated the pages well enough, but apparently not. At the back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I walk up and sat there, I would have a better view, he thought. Quietly, he crawled through the orchestra, past feet, between instrument cases, and around music stands towards the drums. 
How'd you get here, little fellow? The drummer whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop from the play. Someone will be looking for you. He put Corduroy up on the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to one side of the curtain. I could see better from there, thought Corduroy. But before he got to the chair, a stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theater. Backstage was very busy. Actors were coming and going, changing costumes and getting their props. One actor almost grabbed Corduroy. I could find a safer spot, he decided, and he hid between the costumes. This is safe, he thought, but I'll never see anything from here. There was a tree with a basket in its branches in the wing off to one side of the stage. I would be able to see from there, Corduroy thought, and he climbed up the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corduroy, this is more like it. Not too high, not too low. This is just right. He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater, said Corduroy. After a number of different scenes, the stage manager called out, Final scene, everyone. Take your places. Stagehands quickly moved new scenery onto the stage while the actors went into position. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving right onto the stage. Then it started to grow. Up, 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 up went the tree, the basket and Corduroy. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy, as he looked down at the stage far below. The tall tree made him think of the tall man who sat in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I get back to, the, back to Lisa if I'm up in this tree? On the stage below, Mother Goose started to sing, Rock-a-bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Off stage, a fan blew air onto the branches of the tree. The cradle began to rock, back and forth, up and down, back and forth, and up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held on to the sides of the cradles that rocked faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing. When the bows break, the cradle will fall. And crack, the bow did break. And down will come baby, cradle and all. Down, down, down came Corduroy, cradle and all. Before Corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up from, for the curtain call. The audience clapped as the actors bowed. Corduroy bowed too. curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to, they wondered. The usher bought, brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are, said Lisa. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see and I wanted to get a little cor closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, said Lisa, you certainly got closer. The very next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. And that is the end of how Corduroy took a bow. That was a very cool story about making the best out of what could have been a bad situation. Corduroy could have been lost. He could have sulked or cried that he couldn't see the, the play anymore. But instead, he kept trying and kept persevering and he moved forward. And eventually, he ended up with the best seat in the house. So good that he ended up in the play. 
So I think that should be a good lesson to everybody that sometimes things get hard and sometimes you'll be in a situation that may seem really rough and no way out. But if you just keep trying, then you can make the best of that situation and you never know what may come of it. You may end up taking a bow on stage. Just like Jupiter here. You like your close up? We have to give all of our animals their close ups and see how just beautiful and unique every single one of these guys are. I don't care if it's got fuzz or fur or scales or feathers. They are all beautiful, amazing creatures in my eyes. Right, buddy? Yeah, you know I'm talking to you. All right, have a good night.